Yes, Lord. And then we just thank you, Father God, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 <laughs> so, um, very quickly, I'm looking for one person who is especially blessed in a powerful way. And you, if you'd like to share, I'd like to come and share what, what, what went on for you during your prayer time. Is there anybody? Hey folks, good to see you this evening. Last Wednesday um, was just really sweet, and uh, it was so good to be with you last Wednesday. Um, and uh, <laughs> ten weeks ago, uh, I was walking on a ferry boat from Friday Harbor coming back to the mainland when my foot uh, stubbed and I tripped and I went down and I hit my head on a metal bulkhead. Oh, dang. And uh, for the last, uh, so it's been 10 weeks ago, and uh, last Wednesday, uh, White prayed with me and it was a term. And I had constant pain uh, for eight weeks. Um, it was a term. 
But the first couple weeks, uh, I talk in a sentence and a word would disappear. Uh, I remember a couple times speaking a paragraph to someone and it didn't make sense. So I backed off from talking paragraphs. <laughs> um, I was a little dizzy. Uh, sometimes walking a straight line is difficult. Uh, what was worse was just the feeling of there's something wrong and I can't figure it out. I don't remember much of the last two months. And uh, but irritable, short fuse, my wife deserves a medal. <laughs> I've had to go to three people here in the body and apologize to them for being sharp with them. And it's all because the filter was even, was strange when you have a head trauma. You don't know what you don't know until you begin to pull out of it. And, and so in the midst of it, didn't even know. In fact, I was talking to our staff just two weeks ago. And I didn't know I didn't make a whole lot of sense until John pulled me aside and very graciously let me know I didn't make a lot of sense. And I was going, I made a lot of sense, you know. It's the weirdest thing. But what was the strangest of all? Well, let's see. I had nine symptoms of head trauma. Whenever I had to figure something out, all of a sudden the pain would spike and I'd take my forehead off. So it, they said it's... Uh, frontal lobes where the executive functioning is, including problem solving. And so all of a sudden, I would avoid problems because it hurt too much. And then when somebody called me with a problem, uh, all of a sudden I would cut it off because it's just too painful. And then they wouldn't understand because how could they? And I didn't. So I'd reach for the file in my memory or in something I had to do, and I pulled out the file and it was empty. I even didn't know that there were some things I needed to follow, and the work here came to grinding up. All of that to say, it feels so good to have made a turn and starting to climb out of that. And the interesting part of that is, there was a weird, haze that was smoky and dark this whole time until last <laughs> Wednesday. And in it carried its own personality. It wasn't mine. There was this background white noise, but it wasn't white, it was dark and brown. No, dark and gray. I couldn't figure it out. Until Dwight, until Dwight one morning woke in travail. This is the house of prayer. We're learning about what it is to pray. But travail is another place of doing business and getting results. And he prayed that morning. He woke up in travail for me. So he called me with him. And I said, then please pray for me tonight, which was last Wednesday. And when he prayed for me, I heard a growl. And the gray haze disappeared. I knew something was different. But I didn't share it much, except with my wife. I wanted to test it. It made the difference. I mean, all of a sudden things got uh, settled, clean, the injury's still there, but now I can deal with it. And that pressure's off. It's that background sense that if this stays like this, you know, I don't know if I can continue. We even had a brief conversation, very brief indeed of what it would be like to just retire. Because after eight weeks, I was being worn down. And I've always said, I'm, uh, I don't want to retire. The call remains. And, and he's continuing to expand and deepen and 
things are happening now that I've dreamed about 20 years ago. And yet this thing wanted to end mm. the will of God. I'm saying to you, we need each other. And we need each other and cover one another because there's times when we don't see it, but somebody else will, if you're available. And so the beauty of prayer and being available to the Holy Spirit so that he can navigate what he would like to use you with next. And I am a recipient of a man who is available to the Holy Ghost. And for any of you, as you continue to say, I'm your handmaid and do with me what you wish. You remember I shared with you a while back, and that was, if you don't have a prayer life, then your service will have a shelf life. And it's so key for y'all to understand that intimacy waits for you. And it happens through prayer. Talking, communication. Mm -hmm. We are continuing in Revelation chapter 4. And by the way, Dwight, thank you so much again. And in Revelation 4, we've been looking at the seven lamps that are ablaze at the throne of God. We've covered the first three. The next one is the blaze over the lamp of counsel. Counsel. And I am so touched that we get to have a man that I very much uh, respect and honor, Dr. Stephen Wilson, as one of the writers here. I'll let him introduce her. You'll recognize him because he calls this church home. But he's ministered in 80 nations. And furthermore, what God continues to do with this lovely couple is very precious. And, uh... So you got your website, and then you got your target audience. Let me show you how to get all of these guys in there. Click on the link. Let me show you how to do it.